If you please, ma'am. The post's just come. Thank you, Hannah. A good girl, that. Very obliging. Two letters from Jane. At last. I've been wondering why we had... This one was misdirected at first. No wonder, for she wrote the direction very ill indeed. Would you be very angry if I beg you to postpone our outing? Not at all. Of course you want to read your letters. Your uncle and I will walk to the church and call back for you in an hour. Thank you. You're very kind. My dearest Lizzie, I hope your journey has been as delightful as you anticipated. I confess I've hardly had time to write. My nephews and nieces have commandeered almost every moment. But they are such dear children. Oh, dearest Lizzie, since writing the above, something has occurred of a most unexpected and serious nature. But I am afraid of alarming you. Be assured we are all well. What I have to say relates to poor Lydia. Lydia? An express came at 12 last night, just as we were all gone to bed. The letter was from Colonel Forster to inform us that Lydia was gone off to Scotland with one of his officers to earn the truth with Wickham. <gasps> You will imagine our surprise and shock. To Kitty, however, it does not seem so wholly unexpected. I am very, very sorry. So imprudent a match on both sides. But I am willing to hope the best, and that his character has been misunderstood. I wish I could believe it. His choice is disinterested, at least. He must know that our father can give him nothing. Yes, that is true. But how could he do this? She is silly enough for anything. But we can love Lydia. Marry Lydia. We expect them soon. Return from Gretna, man and wife. But I must conclude. I cannot be away from our poor mother long. I shall write again as soon as I have news. My dearest Lizzie, I hardly know what to write, but I have bad news. Imprudent as a marriage would be, we now fear worse. That it has not taken place. That Wickham never intended to marry Lydia at all. Great God, I knew it. They were traced as far as Clapham. I cannot think so ill of him. Poor Lydia. Poor, stupid girl. Colonel Forster said he feared that Wickham was not a man to be trusted. Dearest Lizzie, I cannot help but beg you all to come here as soon as possible. I know my dear uncle and aunt so well that I am not afraid of requesting it. To London our father has gone with Colonel Forster to try to discover them. What father means to do, I am sure I know not. But my uncle Gardner's advice and assistance would be everything in the world. Oh, yes. Where is my uncle? If you please, ma'am. Miss Bennet, I hope this... I beg your pardon. I must find Mr. Garden at this moment. A business that cannot be delayed. I have not an instant to lose. Good God, what is the matter? <laughs> of course, I will not detain you for a moment, but let me go, or, or let the servant go and fetch Mr. and Mrs. Gardner. You are not well. You cannot go yourself. No, I must. Come, I insist. This will be for the best. Hello there. Would you have Mr. and Mrs. Gardner fetched here at once? They walked in the direction of... The church. The church. Yes, sir. At once. Is there nothing you can take for your present relief? A uh, glass of wine. Can I get you one? Truly, you look very ill. No, I thank you. There is nothing the matter with me. I am quite well. 
I'm only distressed by some dreadful news which I've just received. <laughs> just received a letter from Jane with such dreadful news. It cannot be concealed from anyone. And my younger sister has left all her friends, has eloped, has thrown herself into the power of Mr. Wickham. They've gone off together from Brighton. You know him too well to doubt the rest. She has no money, no connections, nothing that can tempt him. She's lost forever. But I think that I might have prevented it. I who knew what he was. Had I but explained some part of it only. Had his character been known, this could not have happened. But it is all too late now. I'm grieved indeed. Grieved, shocked. But is it certain, absolutely certain? Oh, yes. They left Brighton together on Sunday night. They were traced as far as London, but not beyond. They are certainly not gone to Scotland. And what has been done? What has been attempted to recover her? My father has gone to London. And Jane writes to beg my uncle's immediate assistance. I hope that we shall leave within half an hour. But what can be done? I know very well that nothing can be done. How is such a man to be worked on? How are they even to be discovered? I have not the smallest hope. Never have I thought I could love him. Never have I thought that I could ever love him. And now, all love must be in vain. I'm afraid you have long been desiring my absence. Would to heaven that anything could be either said or done on my part to offer consolation to such distress. But I will not torment you with vain hopes which might seem to require your thanks. This unfortunate affair will, I fear, prevent my sisters having the pleasure of seeing you at Pemberley today. Oh, yes. Be so kind as to apologize for us to Miss Darcy. Say that urgent business calls us home immediately. Conceal the unhappy truth as long as possible. I know that it cannot be long. You may be assured of my secrecy. I hope the matter may be more happily concluded than you have at present reason to hope. I shall leave you now. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. I'll never see him again.